question right here was submitted by one of the OG Lung Gang Reddit members, Zed Sparks. Now, even though we addressed the issues in the comments that he was facing, I thought, why not do it for YouTube, innit? For nine marks, work energy principle. So, we've got a particle of mass 0.5 kg is attached to one end of a light elastic spring of natural length 0.9 meters and modulus of elasticity lambda newtons. The other end is attached at O on a rough plane inclined at theta, where sine theta is three fifths. The coefficient of friction is 0.15. The pico is held 1.5 meters from O. The pico is then released and comes to rest 0.7 meters up the plane. Find the value of lambda. All right. Now, for me, work energy principle is probably my favorite uh, topic in further mechanics. So it's really simple, actually, uh, when you go about it, if you learn it properly, obviously. So if a pi core mass 0.5 kg, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna label 0.5 g. And there is going to be a reaction force, okay? That should be resting on the particle, I mean, on the plane, but this is the, what the diagram looked like. Uh, I'll do this. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is gonna resolve this because it's just a standard thing to do, right? So this would also be theta. So the adjacent side would be 0.5 g cos theta, and this would be 0.5 g sine theta. And we actually know what sine theta is, it's 3 fifths. So if you divide that by five, you get 0 0.1 times by three, 0 0.3. So actually this is 0 0.3 g. And if you do your triangle, Theta, angle 3, 5. This will be 4. So cos theta is 4 fifths. So this will be 0 0.4 g. Okay, so we've dealt with that. What's the next thing I would label? I guess, I mean, we're going to be projecting it up, right? So I'm just going to label the friction. And the friction will be mu r. Mu being 0 0.15 times r which we actually know what R is, it's 0.4 G. Okay, so how do we deal with energy questions like this? Well, there's three types of energy we study at uh, further maths. That is elastic potential energy. We've got potential energy, so falling vertically. And we've got um, kinetic energy, <laughs> okay? Uh, so we took look at the beginning and the end. And we got to look at what is the total energy at the beginning and what is the total energy at the end? And what is the work done against resistance? Because when you work, when this particle moves up the plane, it's gonna be working against the friction, against the resistance. That resistance is taking energy out of the system, okay? So I call this the energy initial, EI, EI, EIO. So down here, this is the beginning of the motion, right? When it comes to elastic, well, not elastic, when it comes to potential energy, you always need a reference point, yeah? Where is the bottom line? Where is, I call it the initial line? Always take the lowest point of the motion to be your initial line. I, L, my initial line. Meaning, at the beginning here, the particle has no potential energy because it's on the initial line and it does not have kinetic energy because it's not moving. The only thing it has is elastic potential energy, okay? Which is lambda x squared over two L. So lambda x. Now L, if I just explain L first, L is the natural length of the spring or string, which in this case was what, 0 0.9? Now x is how much have you extended or compressed from your natural length. Now us, we're being stretched 1.5 meters, but remember the natural length, the natural length is 0 0.9. So the extension is what, 0 0.6? So 0 0.6 skirt. 
Okay, let me type that in, in my calculator. So we got 0 0.6, wait, 0 0.6 squared over two lots of 0 0.9, one fifth. So I get 0 0.2 lambda. All right, now let's look at our energy finale. Now it does say that, what does it do? Uh, so much yap. It's, it comes to rest 0 0.7 meters up the plane from its starting point. I kind of summarized. So it's moved 0 0.7 meters up this way. You should say like that. Obviously, it's not to scale. Okay. All right. So it's not the natural length. Okay, so it would have moved the natural length if it had moved 0 0.6. If it moved 0 0.6, it would be at 0 0.9 in terms of its distance, which would have made x be 0. Okay, then it wouldn't have had elastic potential. But 0 0.7 means that it's going beyond its natural length. Okay, so we're going to think about lambda x squared over 2L. So it's still having elastic potential energy. So if you move 0 0.7 meters up this way, yeah, if you do 0 0.7 minus 1.5 means that it's 0 0.8 away from O. Obviously, it's not to scale, remember? But the natural length is 0 0.9. The difference between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 is 0 0.1. And this, in this case, is a compression, okay? So it's gone beyond its natural extension, and now it's in the compression phase. Over two lots of 0 0.9. Now, what else does it have? Being up here means that it is above the initial line. It has gravitational potential energy. That height we need to find, okay? We can find it very easily because the hypotenuse is 0 0.7. This is a right angled triangle and we have theta, okay? This is gonna be sine, sine of theta. I'll just do it here is h over 0 0.7, okay? So it's 0 0.7 sine theta. But remember, sine theta is 3 fifths. So I'm doing 3 fifths times 0 0.7, which is 0 0.42 or 21 over 50. Uh, I did decimalize this. I'm just gonna do 0 0.42. So, well, I haven't even written down what the gravitational potential formula is. It's mgh. Okay, so I've actually written the h part. So I'm going to write times the mass, which is 0 0.5, times g. And g, we use 9.8. Not physics, you would use 9.81. Okay, so what have we got? We've got 0 0.1 skirt over two lots of 0 0.9. Oh, that's one over 180. That's not very nice. One over 180 lambda plus, maybe I do do fractions everywhere. Do you think that's a good idea? I don't know. That was one fifth, wasn't it? Uh, so 0 0.42 times 0 0.5 times 9.8. Oh, that's so ugly. So you have 1029 over 500. How would you guys do it? Would you work with a mixture of fractions and decimals or just uh, fractions? Now we have to do the work done against resistance. Now, work done against resistance is very simple. You're just doing the distance times the force. Okay, force times distance. Now, what is the resistance in this case? La resistance is this. Yeah, that's my resistance, 0.15 R. So 0.15 times R, which is the reaction force, which is 0.4 G, my G, and G is 9.8, times the distance it moved. It moved a whole 0.7 meters. So my work done against resistance, la resistance is 0.15, 0 0.4, 9.8, and 0 0.7. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> 1029. Oh, it's another 1029. Over 2500. Okay, so how do we connect EI, EIO, -E -I -E EF, and work done against resistance? Remember what I said at the beginning. The work done takes energy out of the system to leave you with your final energy. So it's EI, your initial energy, minus your work done against resistance because it extracts energy from the system, is your final energy. So I'm saying one fifth lambda minus this. equals my final energy, which is 1 over 180 lambda plus 1029 over 500. And then we're going to rearrange. So I'm going to do 1 fifth. 1 fifth minus 1 over 180 is 7 over 36 lambda is 1029 over 500 plus 1029, 2500, 3087 over 1250. Now we have used gravity 9.82 SF, so I'm going to do that divided by 7 over 36, which is 12.7008, so I'm going to say about 13 newtons, mate. And that is our solution. Nine marks. Now, mechanics, I would say very generous with their marks, but, you know, I think the thinking behind mechanics is more intense. Uh, so obviously nine marks in pure mass is way more working. Uh, you would have seen me do a further mass question where for eight marks I was doing pages and, or boards worth of integration. But yeah, that's this question, guys. If you want to submit questions and discuss more questions, obviously you can head to Loon Gang Reddit page in the description. Uh, like the video if you learned something today and subscribe for more content like this. Drop a comment to let me know how you would have solved this problem if you are doing further mechanics. And guys, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Nice.